This is episode 20, and today is February 2nd. In this episode, really what I, I want to talk about is what we call scope creep. Anyone in the, in the IT industry has certainly heard of this term, scope creep. It's like when you have a plan, and it's well-defined, but along the way, you say, or others say, hey, can we do this? Can we add that? Next thing you know, you're way over budget or you're behind schedule. And scope creep happens everywhere, whether it's construction or information technology or any kind of project. If you're a project manager, scope creep is always on your mind. And it's hard to explain it to your beholders or the people that are relying on you to finish the project on time and on budget. But having said that, uh, some ideas come up during construction that you hadn't thought of. Of course, the best time to implement some of those ideas are while you're still finishing the concrete, when you're putting in water and electrical, obviously. You don't want to wait till you're finished before you go back and make those changes. So sometimes it's you just have to go ahead and do it. If it makes you happy. I'll be explaining a little bit of changes we made that were not in the plan. But I think the, ch the changes that I'm going to have the foreman do uh, are, are good and they'll make a lot of sense and save a lot of money in the future. And since our last video, decided to incorporate some bench seats all the way down this partition here. Didn't plan on it, but just looked like a good idea. And we're going to put some electrical boxes underneath the benches so we can add some down lighting, some accent lighting under the benches, which I thought would look pretty cool. On the, on the rear side of the building, I realized that it, because it's a firewall, there's no point in putting stainless steel railings back there on, on this wall, because they would just have to come down if someone decides to build a two-story back here. And plus, we've got the sink, plumbing for our sink. And I decided uh, this would be a great place to have a, a wet bar or even a full-blown sink and a barbecue place and countertops. Uh, of course, I only put one electrical outlet because I hadn't planned on all that. So what we're going to do, we're going to complete this wall here with four hollow blocks and encompass the plumbing and we're going to take this outlet here and expand it to each part of this wall up higher so when the time comes to put some shelving or countertops we'll have electricity already there but coming around this side to where the Mount, Mount Banahau is uh, we're going to have the actual stainless steel railings here, here all the way around the front of the porch, and on this side. Now that's a firewall too, but I'm going to take a chance that whoever builds there won't do it two-story. If they do, well, that's okay, we'll, we'll just remove those and deal with that. We've got a lot of work done on the upstairs CR. The plumbing is almost complete inside and they're finishing up the outside walls. The CR here is going to have a concrete roof to support uh, the possibility of having a, a water tank up top. And so we're, we still have to evaluate whether we're going to need a water tank. I think we will. But uh, that's a perfect place for the water tank. So I'm I'm down here at the at the ground level, 
and the guys are on break, so I'm going to take this opportunity to show you what happened down here. So I talked about scope creep upstairs, uh, but we also had kind of a, I would say, a pretty big mistake that, w that was made earlier on. It was my mistake. Uh, when, when we set the elevation for the garage, we started it at the high corner and you know made a level a level line to the low corner and I didn't realize at the time but what we ended up with was that the garage number two and three would uh, would have a kind of a, a steep ramp to get up into that would be difficult for uh, for a vehicle or even a motorcycle and it didn't look right didn't feel right so the more I the more I looked at it the more I decided that let's let's fix this before it's not fixable because the of course the slab inside the garage hasn't been laid yet so the only way that I thought that we could fix this is to basically excavate about 22 inches further down into the earth than we thought we were going to. Or I shouldn't say 22 inches. I, it's more like to, uh, 14 inches. Uh, and the, the rest of that that makes up the 22 is going to be the gravel sub-base and uh, six inches of concrete. So we end up with, with a 22 inch additional excavation to fix this problem and but at this point I don't call it a problem because it's going to do a couple things it's going to fix the the entry and exits of these garage doors but more importantly to me it's going to raise my overhead height you know by 14 inches which is great I mean wants to build a shop they always want a high ceiling so I'm not at all mad about that. I, I, I'm going to like my high seat. Here's what we're dealing with. I'm going to flip the camera back here. Right here is where it's the east side of the garage, and this is the low point of the elevation. And we did we had you know three three rows of hollow block here. And if you see, here's the street. And to get from the street up in the garage would have required building a, a large ramp here which would be unsightly and difficult to use so upon doing some measurements we decided to basically blow out the wall that uh, that was going to be under grade and we're going to make the threshold a lot lower to just above grade here. So this wall here is, come, is going to come out, that wall has come out, and the wall in garage number one is going to be, which is two hollow blocks high, is going to come out. And that will give us a level entryway through the door into the inside of the garage. So what will we won't have any step downs in the garage or any uneven surfaces so that's the plan but of course it requires taking out a lot of earth and this area here is where the septic tank is going to go so that is about one meter high so that's this area here has to really a lot of earth has to come out here to get that septic tank to the proper level and this is almost at subgrade here uh, it's about 20 at least 20 inches I'm thinking I have to take it down to 22 inches wait for this clay to dry compact the clay with my plate compactor then I'm going to slowly add gravel in here as I compact uh, until I have four inches of, of good gravel sub base I plan to use a uh, vapor barrier uh, which isn't used here a lot and I'm not sure it's needed but I want to try it I want to try it 
to uh, basically inhibit any kind of moisture that could come up under the concrete slab. So we'll have a, a plastic vapor barrier, then we'll have our 16 millimeter rebar, and then we're going to have our six inches of concrete for our final elevation. After the learning curve that I was subjected to with the concrete pour on the roof, that was the first time I've ever poured concrete or been a part of anything like that, so I'm learning along the way. Um, it didn't come out awful, but it, it wasn't as level as I would want it to be. And I think part of that is because the <clears throat> construction crews around here are mostly uh, used to having a concrete surface that's going to be covered by tile anyway. So those hills and valleys are easily fixed when you when you're going to lay tile. Uh, but we're not going to have tile up there. So I'm going to let it go for now, and then in the future I may experiment with a concrete grinding to level the surface and maybe add some um, other overlayments on it. But at least I want to I want to get the the valleys and the ridges off of the roof surface. But I'm going to put that aside for now. Having said that, I don't want that to happen on this pour. I mean, this is very important. This is the inside floor of the garage, and I want it to be as perfect as I can get it. So, again, I'm not an expert in concrete by any means, not even a novice. So I'm eating up all kinds of YouTube videos and articles so I can try to educate myself on proper procedure for laying this slab inside the garage.